Well, good morning, guys. Hope you're all doing well. So we've driven back up into Glencoe from Fort William now, and as you can see, maybe see out this way if I spin you around, the weather's deteriorated and it's uh, it's going more like sleet and rain. So uh, it's going to be uh, quite a challenge today, I think, because. I find especially difficult is when that snow starts to melt it gets very sort of uh, gritty and bitty if you know what I mean it's uh, it's quite a messy looking landscape whereas when this the snow's covered it completely it's it's easier to work with so we'll have to see what happens today the temperature is risen it was up to about six degrees but it's just dropping again now so maybe maybe it'll get colder and uh, we'll get a little bit more snow today. We'll have to see how it goes though. So we're just waiting in the vans and in the car at the minute, just waiting for the uh, the light to come up and see what's gonna happen. Cause at the minute it keeps clouding in and uh, clouding out again. So uh, yeah, just waiting for the light really. So yeah, we've gone back up the road again to where these lakes were last night because um, Brian and Adrian wanted to come back to this area and, and check it out again. The light hasn't really happened. Um, the sunrise, it was a little bit pink behind me over this direction here. You can just see there's some, uh, some light over this way, but it didn't really turn into anything. So as a result, there's not a great deal of light in any direction really. All I'm waiting for really now is the light to come up and you see these clouds above the hills beyond here. I'm just waiting for a bit more texture and a bit more detail in those clouds. And maybe I can sort of capture some sort of pano format image um, off in the distance down that way as well there's a little bit of light on the hills that I was photographing yesterday wasn't a great deal there either but just off in the distance there you can see there's a little bit of light appearing down there so gonna wait out a little while see if we get a little bit more texture and detail in these clouds above here and then see if I can make anything of that it's going to be a similar shot to uh, the last video shot that I showed you um, where we're getting these basically a pano shot because there's not a lot else I can really do with it without the light and without that texture and detail I'll just have to bear with it and see what we get now as well as waiting for that texture and detail in the clouds what I'm actually waiting for as well is for the clouds to move from the top of the hills up there because I want to be able to see the the detail of those hills if you're going in for a close-up shot where it's tight in and you're going for that look with the uh, with the clouds swirling around the tops of the mountains, that works great. But in this format where I want to uh, make a panorama, I want as much detail as I possibly can get. So I want the detail of those hills at the top there so you can see the tops. Hopefully a bit of texture in those clouds and then uh, I think that'll make a better image. So I just want to show you the shot that I've just been going for now. I'll show you the back of the camera because what's actually happening now is we're getting that light as the light rises, the sun rises sorry behind me, the light is actually reflecting onto these mountains now and we're getting nice light just off to the left hand side of them. Now the other thing I'm doing apart from freezing to death because it's gone really cold again which could be a good sign for the rest of today is I've lowered the camera perspective slightly. I was trying to get rid of the lake itself, or the lock, sorry, itself out of the equation altogether because I felt as though it wasn't really adding anything. But the more I've looked, there's actually two lines in the lock itself, two lines in the ice on the top, and they're both kind of coming in from left and right and converging towards the center of the image so it's kind of leading you in from both sides so I thought it was quite an interesting kind of almost like a foreground to it so I've included it in a couple of these shots just to see what's kind of what's going to work best I want to put both of the shots up to see what you think though so what I'll do is I'll put a version of the shot up with uh, without that lock in the bottom section at all and then I'll put the one up with it and see if you if you like it with or without be interested to find out because uh, yeah I just noticed that noticed that detail I haven't included a whole lot of it but I've just included enough just to kind of show you the leading lines in there and yeah, that light in there now is really quite nice on the snow itself. It's just kind of lifting it and giving that a bit of bit more interest that I can see anyway. As I say, it's not a 
it's not a groundbreaking shot but i i really do like the the image itself because i think with this little bit of light now it's just kind of helping it really really pop so what i've got what you should be able to see is this strip pano again which i use all the time and I've, I'm at F16, ISO 100. I've got those, the two mountains that you can see in front of me there. You've got one in the middle with kind of a black point where the snow's melted off it. That's in the middle of the frame. And then I've got the other two behind it kind of on the top third intersections where it crosses over there. So it just, I think that really balances the image quite nicely. And on top of that, those leading lines lead you into that central mountain without the snow on it. So I think it really does work. Nothing complicated. I've got my IS switched on because obviously it's a little bit more windy than it has been today. And yeah, simple shot. I'll pop them both up now. Tell me what, which version you prefer. Yeah, so as you can see now, the weather's really closed in again and we're actually getting snow again, which is fantastic because I was a bit concerned it was just going to rain and we were going to lose all this lovely wintry conditions. But no, it seems to be picking up again and we're getting this lovely winter weather coming in again. So hopefully we're going to get a few more images today. There's some nice light off in the hills just in the distance there. And obviously once this snowstorm moves through, we should get some nice light coming through. So yeah, gonna bear with it and just hope it picks up a little bit. Yeah, definitely nice and snowy. So I think things are gonna pick up hopefully. So literally about 10 minutes later, we started getting this beautiful light happening on these hills over here. So that shot that I've just showed you, the two shots with those two different versions, here's another version with more light and you can see the difference that extra bit of light adds to the frame it gives so much more dimension and depth to the image and really really lifts it and gives some real interest now even though i'm not getting to see the tops of the hills like i was wanting to i think the light is almost kind of making up for that it's actually giving it at least some point of interest and actually because the light is illuminating those peaks either side there it kind of almost leaves a little bit of mystery as to what's beyond as well. But I, I, I think that's only down to the fact that it's got light on it. If it didn't have light on it and it was flat like it was before, I don't think it works like that. I think you have to have that sort of light to lift the scene and give it that bit of pop, I think. came across this scene here, you can just see this, uh, the sea lock here leading out to the hills in the distance and you see the light above the mountains. Well, not long ago that light was kind of confined to just above the mountains so it almost looked like a, a vignette. Really, really nice. So what I've done is, I'm not going to walk you through it because obviously it keep, the rain keeps blowing through here quite fast. So we're getting just a chance to take a shot and then the rain comes in again. So basically all I've done is I've tried a couple of different, same composition, 
letterbox style again, but I've tried a couple of different variations of shutter speed using a 10 stop to sh smooth the uh, water right out for about a minute long exposure. And I also tried another one with a six stop filter, which gave me around four to five seconds. And I like the look of both of them. Um, so I'll pop both of them up on screen so you can see the differences the shutter speeds made on it. I think possibly the, um, the smoothed out version looks slightly better, but I'm not sure whether it does away too much with too much of the texture up in the sky. With this kind of scene though, there isn't a great lot anyway, so I don't think it makes that much difference, but I'll pop them up and tell me what you think. So just as I got those shots, I also wanted to get a shot using these rocks here. And I tried a test shot and I was a bit too far over to the left. But obviously I'm trying to do this really quick. That's not why I'm not running you through the back, eh? Because there's so much rain keeps coming through this section here. And the tide's coming in fast, as you can see now. So basically what I did was is use these rocks as foreground element. And then the mountains and the light and off, off in the distance there. 16 by 9 um, I just focused on the rocks themselves because it's already soft but in the background anyway so I don't need to worry too much about getting that really sharp just focused on the end of the rocks back there and they they seem to be on the back of the camera anyway enough in focus so hopefully this shot's turned out and I'll pop it up now for you So just before the rain comes in, I thought I'd quickly show this variation of this shot that I've been working on. I'll just press record on the back of here now. So what you'll see is I'm using the four by three aspect ratio, which I know is rare for me, but there you go. And I've got the, uh, the mountains off in the distance. There's some beautiful light on the hills right back there now. Now what I've done is I'm focusing in the lower third of the image, just about there or in that sort of area, anywhere where I can grab focus. And what I've done is I've put a case pol polarized filter on the front. It's actually an eight, uh, six stop and polarizer in one. I've polarized the water so it's darker and it also darkens that sky and gives it a bit of extra detail there as well. And what I'm doing is just timing the waves. I've got a little remote shutter and I'm just waiting for the waves to come in. I'm about one, about a second somewhere on there just over uh, f16 iso 320 and i'm just timing it as these waves come in now and what that's doing is just retaining a little bit of texture in the lower third of the image a bit of detail from the water as it moves through and because it's got those whites in that lower section of the image there it balances the sky at the upper section of the image so i've just got the strip with the mountains in the middle and the the water and then the the actual waves that are coming in at the minute are adding that white detail to the lower section of the frame and i think it balances the image really nicely and works really well so i've got a balanced exposure there it's not a problem I'm about one stop under at that just to make sure i'm capturing all the details and i'm just remotely triggering it like this every time the wave comes in and I'm just keeping firing off shots as it moves through because the light's really nice back there as well. 
and just keep pressing the trigger every time there's a wave that looks interesting and it looks as though it's going to have quite a lot of detail in it I'm just grabbing the shot like that anyway hopefully this shot's turned out it should be even nicer now that lights improved back there and I'll pop it up now for you So it's been a fun day, but as, <laughs> but as you can see, look at this now, it's absolutely chucking down, kind of a mix of sleet, snow, hail, bad barnet, hair blowing all directions. Frantic but awesome, what a brilliant trip. Yeah, it's been fantastic, good fun couple of days, definitely worth making Excellent. the trip what up for you, wasn't it? With Adriano. Got some good images I think today and yesterday, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's been fruitful, it's been fruitful, today's been tricky mine. Yeah, today it has. Was, We've had a lot of this, yeah, a lot of this to do. Uh, that's the that's the fun part, isn't it? Yeah, well, this is it. So, heading home Sunday. Heading home Sunday, back to Vancouver. Not sure what I've got in store in Vancouver because it's minus 17 over the last few days. So Chilly. we'll see. Chilly. A wee bit nippy. Anyway, good to catch up, eh? Yeah, great to catch up, catch up, mate. It's been good luck. Yeah, it has definitely good fun. So hopefully you've enjoyed this week's video, like and subscribe, check out Bry's channel and I'll see you on the next video soon. Take care guys, Peace. see you later, ta-da.